purity, no surrender. We no lotion, pet, and powder. We tell them no retreat, no surrender. We no lotion, pet, and powder, and powder. This independent film by two young millennial Chinese, I guess you can say expats, so to speak, of filmmakers, and they've done an independent film on what they know as the Silk Road Economic Belt and the 21st Century Maritime Silk Road, or for short, as what ones would know it now, as the Belt and Road Initiative. If ones aren't following up on this specific project, get on it as soon as possible, ASAP, and start following up on what's going on with the Belt and Road Initiative. We've spoken on certain things like the BRICS nations or Brazil, Russia, India, China, and South Africa, and this all kind of ties into uh, what is um, being presented. And what I mean presented, what's actually being done as we speak, as far as the Belt and Road Initiative, as, of course, uh, China, the People's Republic of China, is continuing to um, assert itself as one of the leading powers in the world at this point. And we find it so interesting that, you know, our two young ones, uh, probably around our own age, uh, doing some traveling on vacation, and all of a sudden they find themselves recording for a film, about uh, 30 minutes or so, I actually had the opportunity to sit and watch it in an entirety. So I, I actually posted on YouTube as well as I distributed on uh, the Vice Network, B-I-C-E, you're probably more familiar with that, but it's also up on the YouTube for free of charge, and I would say get to that film ASAP before it's taken down or before <laughs> they attach a charge for it. Because it is you know, golden, even just for the 30 minutes that it's presented. And it uh, focuses mostly on China's relationship with Kenya at this moment. I won't give away everything, but such an interesting um, assessment, such an interesting analysis, just uh, from a microscopic view and ones have heard so much about China and their workings, especially economically and socially on an international scale, but this actually gave you an inside view on certain things that are going on. And at this moment, I have to be honest, because I've mentioned this before, I personally had my own thoughts about how China had been going about their business, going about, uh, their dealings on an international scale, and it was more so confirmed film. And now, uh, you know, I, I definitely will be going with the gut more so on China <laughs> as far as they move forward. But once, of course, you know, may have heard even you know, certain aspects of uh, social media and other uh, alternative media, and even so mainstream media, that China is just this big bad wolf of all countries, and it's you know, uh, of course, the uh, traditional communist nation of sorts. <laughs> These things are, yeah, yeah, I mean, it couldn't be further from the truth as far as uh, China's policy, China's dealings, China's uh, workings throughout the entire world. It's just the fear of certain ones who had sought to consolidate their power at this time are seeing that it's slipping a little bit more rapidly than they thought before, seeing as not only China, but countries like Russia as well are emerging and other emerging countries, uh, and particularly around the entire African continent, are benefiting from this as well. You know, And that is, of course, the countries in Central and South America and the Caribbean as well. But, you know, certain ones, of course, have their own perspective, so we have to take that into consideration. But when we look at this as a whole, it's probably more, one of the more interesting happenings of our time. And we mention this mainly because of the junction we live in, of course, from this 
particular region of the world at this time. And um, again, we mentioned that um, that film. The film is Behind the Belt. Search that out on the YouTube and the Vice Network. Mm -hmm. Once I actually pull that up on the Google, it's probably one of the more and most riveting and interesting documentaries I've seen on such a low budget. But I wouldn't have been able to tell the difference because it was so thoroughly documented and so interesting, just to say the least. I I couldn't wait for the next scene as um, certain things continued to play out. Of course I did, brother. Of course. <laughs> I said, oh, this won't be up here long. I said, I definitely need to dock this <laughs> before <laughs> where, where the ones catch hold. It's probably sitting at maybe a little over 1,000 views, just a little over maybe 1,100 to 1,200 views at this moment. But I'm pretty sure, even so, by the start of 2018, it will be one of the most talked about documentaries especially mm-hmm. dealing with the Belt and Road Initiative coming up. And, again, these were just two young college students that just turned on the camera, and all of a sudden they started asking questions. And they come up with a 30-minute documentary that probably is one of the best on this mm-hmm. specific subject since its inception. So, and I mean, they did this on a, what they call a shoestring budget, so, you know, no backing from – You know, any big company, you know, not even China itself. It was just, you know, two individuals, a young woman, a young man, and they turn the camera on, and (laughs) before you knew it, they are moving. So that's how certain things work in this world. (laughs) Hint, hint. Oh, hint, hint. There's a message there. Hint, hint. I was was going to jump on the story and say, hey, okay, they're doing this UBI thing. We, We get the idea. Why don't we try to discuss among ourselves, you know, our own UBI, you know, our anniversary, you know, what I'm, you know what I'm saying? Standards, at least standards for our own people, for us. So they have this. Most definitely. I would definitely I'll, second that, my brother, because uh, even so, just to um, I'll throw this in as well, you know, that one aspect that we mentioned before that definitely should have been documented by uh, we we Afro Americans, we black Jew, black and brown Jews here in the West. In this sense, was of course the marriage of His Majesty's great grandson. We definitely are not going to let that bone go, as they say. On mm-hmm. that sense, the mm-hmm. those ones are, are celebrating the uh, marriage of the um, the actress uh, Meghan Merkle to um, Prince Harry of um, the uh, English crown. You know, one's of course of our own constituency, we should definitely be championing the continuation of the Ethiopian crown, even True. in exile. And I found that True. so interesting that the New York Times reported on that. So we not we may not be taking it so seriously as a whole, but the opposition yes. is definitely taking that's the problem. So, and that's, <laughs> even in and exile, so, they still revered His Majesty's mm, grandson as the prince. So, interestingly enough, that even so set off a few of his own antennas on that sense. So I said, the New York Times, I said, this is not you know, your world the meal newspaper. <laughs> These are all testimonies to the word. This this is all testimonies to the word. Because we're caught up, we're distracted. We're caught up, you know, in in you know, in in this you know, we're caught up, but still I got the verse for you. I got the verse. The verse that you had mentioned it's ah, in Jeremiah. Bring it forward, brother, bring it forward. One and nine. It says Babylon is suddenly fallen. You, you get that? You get that? Babylon is suddenly falling, you know, so we've been seeing a gradual, like, it seems like fall, but it says Babylon is suddenly fallen and destroyed, howl for her, take balm for her pain, for her pain, if so be she may be healed, then the next verse, verse uh, 9, chapter 51, Jeremiah 51 and 9, we would have healed Babylon, but she is not healed forsake her, in other words, leave her, and let us go, everyone, 
into his own country, for her judgment reacheth to heaven and is lifted up even to the sky. 